Welcome back to the channel everyone. In this video we are targeting basin crappies in northern Wisconsin using forward facing sonar. In conjunction with the Navionics mobile app we find and catch some decent crappies. Stay tuned. I will break down what lakes we look for and how to go about catching them. Oh wait, it wasn't recording. Well, just got this crappie. It's in like 25 feet. We just got out here. I'm just scanning around with the panoptics. Mike just caught this fish. <laughs> it's a beautiful fish. They got cool mm -hmm. colors here. Nice fish, beautiful fish. Mm -hmm. Just got this 10 or 12 inch. You're gonna release them. Come back down there, here he goes. What's up everybody, we're back. As you can tell, we are not in the boat. Brought this thing out here, northern Wisconsin. Do a little crappie mission here. Report there is slush. Like, it's not bad for a sled though, because it'll stay on top. But, I mean, it is there. There's probably six inches of slush underneath this. It's starting to firm up though. Next week or two, it'll be, it should be good to go. Susie just got one crappie, about a 12, 11, 12 incher, good fish, released it, a couple perch before I could get all the cameras rolling here. Um, we're just uh, checking the basin. Big, the, the mobility, it is tough to walk around and I got the, you know, the pan optics here. That's not the lightest thing in the world to carry. Uh, give a shout out to uh, Sherp ET. We met them out here on the lake. They got this cool machine that's called the Sherp that used to be made in the Ukraine. Um, awesome. We got some footage sent to them. Go over and check it out if you're into that kind of stuff. Uh, we'll link a description in the video down below. Uh, they're going to do the same as well on their channel. It's really nice to meet them. Shout out to them, Sherp ET. Check them out. Now let's get back to the fishing. I just popped a hole directly over these fish. It's running around I'm trying to locate them. I think I found them now. The forward facing sonar, I'm able to drill significantly less holes as you would with a flasher and traditionally gritting out the deepest part of the lake searching for these crappies. I'm able to drill a hole look 70 to 80 feet forward for large schools of crappies and then in turn drill a hole directly over the fish and fish them. I just marked some fish about 40 feet away. Good pond. Still there. Directly underneath the hole I just drilled this, the beauty of pan optics. Gotta be a crappie. It's just a mega school. Yep. There is this. A <laughs> There's a giant school down there. That, that guy, I threw him on the ice. No, just because I'm not trying to spook the school. I need to clean the slush out of my hole. Get that down there. Oh man, that is just a lot of fish. I got right on them. <laughs> moving. Trying to get Susie over here. Get out of the fish. Come 
come on. The camera's working? The camera's working? Yeah. A bunch of them. Your camera? No, it ain't working. Wait. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Get a donk. Here he comes. He's mad. Got him. There is a pile down here. See if I can get him through the hole without hitting my deucer. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Jig gonna come right on. Yep. Right back down again. It's not working. Now it's working. This is gonna be instant. Here comes another one. Another one. Screaming up. Ooh baby. Got it. Oh I missed him. This is one of the deal where I don't even really want to pop another hole because I'm afraid I'm gonna spook them. Holy moly. Look at it. Mm -hmm. You got some other people out here fishing too. But they're way away from us because if they see what's going on, they're gonna come over here. Holy moly. No, that's okay. Put it over here. Because I got this one going too. Oh, here they come. Mm -hmm. Competition. He wants to play. Oh, this one's big. Oh, mama. In there. This is gone. That, that's a good one there. Yeah, put it in here. That's a good, that's a good copy right there. That's probably like an 11 inch. Just, I'm not, I'm gonna release these fish. I'm just. There's just a freaking massive amount of fish down here. I'm gonna have to pop another hole so we can get in on this action here. There's just a lot of fish. Here we go. Live in effect. Raise it up. Raise it up a little. Oh, he didn't want that. That guy did. This ain't that big. Oh, it's a bluegill. Bluegill. Look at that. I've heard this lake has some really nice bluegills, but this isn't one of them. That's just a little baby. Here we go. Another one. It's coming up. not really aggressive the first couple were this guy is just he's just slowly meandering if he had a buddy with him he'd be hammering her he might not he's on it now but he it's like he doesn't want it nope I'm go back down so i gotta get it closer to his buddies there's some big marks down here holy cow you gotta be crazy Here we go. Here we go. That's a bigger one. Got him. That's a that's a crappie. 
baby. Hey, baby. Get him up there. That's a little old guy right there, isn't that choppy? All right, so these fish kind of slid off here. This is what I do. I angle my electronics to forward mode. And they are just, just sitting off here, like 10 feet. The fun part. I like water. I got to drill my holes. There, there. Okay. All right, I just wanted to throw this little clip in here of how I go about finding these fish with pan optics. And as you can see in this clip, in the amount of time it took me to drill the hole, go back, get the auger, and come back and actually fish the hole, those fish had already moved on. Hooked up. It's a donk. Crappie. Yeah, that's a crappie. Get him. That's a big one. Get him. That's a nice one. Holy cow. Okay. Okay. He's got to go back. I'm not keeping him that big. That's huge. It's like a 10 tall inch. Oh Look at that. That's a beautiful fish. We're letting him go. They better go out of the hand, Banty. One more. One more. Yeah, it's running. Yeah, that's a crappie. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. She got the little pink tungsten oh, on with yeah. a straight waxy. Mm -hmm. Good job. That's that's a little guy. We might not keep him. We're gonna weed through and keep a couple of these like I don't know. They are very ten inches. There's just a huge school down there. No. Another one? I'm gonna pop, pop another hole here. As you can see, I started right here by the sled. I just drove over here because I could see him. He's hooked up with another one. I could see him like 70 feet away. Just a wadded up school on the camera. On the pan optics. And so I just slid over. 
Oh, oh I well, think she I'm lost it. No, it's okay. I'm just leaving it go. So like I said, I just moved over here and lit right on. There's just a mega school. I might drill a hole over it, but probably 10, 20 feet. I'm just afraid of spooking them, drilling too many holes. But this this group doesn't seem to be moving, so might be all right. That's okay. Yeah? Nice. Camera's on. Okay, I'm going to give you a little breakdown of what I look for when looking for lakes that may potentially hold crappies in the basin. The first tool I use is Navionics and I will look in a particular area in northern Wisconsin that I may be interested in fishing. I use this in conjunction with the Wisconsin DNR website. And this is just an example, Upper Sugarbush Lake. This will give me the total acreage, bottom composition, the type of lake it is, drainage this particular lake is. And another tool I use is Google Maps. Here is Upper Sugarbush Lake. I generally look for lakes that do not have resorts as they have less fishing pressure generally. So I use these three tools to help me narrow my search because there are so many lakes in northern Wisconsin. The type of lake I'm generally looking for is between three to 400 acres with a some type of muck bottom and a basin that drops to maximum depth 40 feet. Ideally 25 to 30 feet. So in this this particular example, Upper Sugar Bush is a smaller lake, but the basin is right around 29 feet. So those are the type of lakes that I look for when I'm looking for places to fish uh, basin crappie midwinter. Another feature I will use to help determine if the lake is easily accessible is the Lake Links app. You can search a particular lake on this app and in the lake info below will tell you whether or not there is a boat landing, a park to access the lake from. This particular lake does not have a boat landing. It will also show you in the map description up above with a little icon 
labeled as bolt latch. That's a good one there. Good, nice eater size. And another one. Over here trying to locate some more fish here. Ooh, that's a good one. That'll have to go back. Okay. She's gonna let this guy go. That's like a 11, 12 inch crappie. Nice fish. She's got the hot spot now. All my marks have disappeared. They were right underneath me. Check a different hole. See if she can get this one in. Yeah? These are a little crappie. Uh, oh, crappie. No more, huh? Mm. Yeah, that's a decent one. That's a decent, yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll probably keep him. Or no, I'll throw him back. That's a pretty decent one. Nice fish. Good job. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't want it. He just looks at it. Yeah, they're definitely not as aggressive as they, as they once were. And we just kind of we just moved around. We just kind of moved over about 50 feet. The school kind of slid flew it off this way. Oh, here comes one. They just come up and nose up to it. And I got him. Got him. I think it's a blue yellow. Just by the way he's fighting. Yep. This might just be a big school of bluegills here, which that's cool too. Like we we're throwing all the elevens and twelves back. I don't know how how big a, the crop you get in this lake, but it's always best to throw the bigger ones back. We're keeping some nines and tens, so I'm gonna drop back down here and see if I get another one while the camera's rolling. Yeah, there's, they're just kind of slid under me. This might be, like I say, this might be a school of bluegills. I don't know. They're just kind of all mixed together. We kind of hit that midday lull. It's about 12. Pushing up on 12.30 now. It's definitely a nice little break, get back to ice fishing, then uh, being in the boat. Decided to come up here to northern Wisconsin. See if we could locate some pan fest, test out my pan. Ooh, here comes one. Oh, he smoked it. This, this is this is bigger. This is a crappie or something. Oh, oh, she's got one too. Oh yeah, this is a little donkey. Little fish. No more. No more. Yeah, she just lost her. And sometimes you got to pull that booster. Pretty fish. Love the colors on these northern Wisconsin fish. There. See if I can get another one. School is right under me now. I've got to sit off to the side here. I got to, want to run that GoPro view for you right on the actual screen of the pan optics. Oh yeah, there's a big old screen coming in now. I don't know if that fish I threw back is going to spook these guys. Nope, guess not, because here come two. Racing. God, oh, I missed him. He slacklined me and everything. 
I will say that about the pan optics. There's a little bit of a delay. You just got to kind of give him some time. Got that guy there. Oh, I lost him. There's a little bit of a delay. It doesn't like a flasher where you have um, a flasher even. I think I, I can't speak for live scope, but with this pan optics, it has a delay in the deep, deeper water like this. When you think that they have it and when they actually have it. Here we go. Got two of them coming again. Just kind of pecked at it. He might not be that big of a fish. Usually, your fish that are up high are your more active fish. That guy, I don't think, is very big, so I'm going to drop by him and try to pick a different one off. Got him. Oh, tiny crappie. <laughs> that's, a, that's a baby. That's what I mean. The upper, the higher up fish are more active fish and bigger fish. That guy. Oh, that's a Just running this uh, Jamie Plastic with a spike on there. Just, uh, there's absolutely no wind today. It's just awesome. If it was windy, it'd be brutal. We'd probably have to set up on these fish and hope they stayed put. This dude's just kind of meandering around. And so you can see us here. They're just kind of sliding in and out. I'd pop a couple holes and, and try to get back on them. Um, now they're sliding off to my left here, which I can't tell which way the transducer's facing. They could really be sliding to the right. I usually just put it back in forward mode and then scan around and try to locate them and drill all over them again. I think we moved on the other side here. There's a lot more slush over here. I didn't have fun getting out of here, but she just hooked up with one. I think it's a bluegill. Perch. A little fat perch. Yeah, show the camera. We ain't keeping purse, all we're looking for crappies. Yeah. Mm -mm. All right, just getting off the lake here. That was an interesting ride back. <laughs> Hit a slush pocket, buried the sled, had to dig it out. I always bring a packable shovel for that situation. End up smoking a belt. <laughs> all the slush there's a ton of slush in some spots out here so you just gotta kind of watch it there's a guy out here right now stuck the wheeler is stuck yeah not not advised four wheelers there are some guys driving full-size vehicles out here but i don't know that I, I would do that there's just a ton of slush underneath but we caught about 20 crappie five uh bluegill not very big and three decent perch that we threw back um it was a good day i got the spare belt on the sled so we're gonna have to see how tomorrow goes with that we're gonna try a different lake but i appreciate everybody for watching if you're not please subscribe and stay tuned for our next video